What's up, Droners, and welcome down under. We're coming to you from Perth, Australia right now, which is why we have such an interesting background. And we, as always, have really interesting Droner stuff because the US government's getting into stuff. We got drones saving lives, like always, so let's jump in. All right, so coming up at number one, uh, we have a really interesting news story here is that DJI and the US Army got a little beef going on. The US government actually, or the US Army specifically, actually just banned the use of all DJI equipment and drones anywhere near or around the facility by their people. Now, this is interesting for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that the US military is starting to use a lot of consumer drones to help them do things, which of course were a lot of DJI drones. Um, and the second reason is because, I mean, you gotta wonder why. They put out a memo to all the, other, to all the US uh, Army military base, everybody, and pretty much told them that you're no longer cease and desist all use of consumer drones from specifically DJI. The only thing that people are speculating, or I'd have to speculate, is that something to do with the origins of DJI equipment. DJI equipment is, of course, made by a Chinese company. Diplomat, diplomatic relations between China and the United States right now with our, our president aren't all that great. So maybe there's something or some like fear going along with that or something else going on with it. All I know is that terrorists have been able to hack into the video feed of our actual military drones before. So maybe it's just a safety precaution saying that if they can do that with a predator drone, then obviously they can do this with a consumer drone and DJI is pretty much the only drones we're using. But since they specifically named DJI, this is something worth keeping your eye on about. But I, I have a hard time believing we're gonna hear anything more about it. Either way, super interesting and weird. So coming to number two, we have the U.S. Navy working with disposable glider drones. Now these ones are super small, like 35 can fit into a Pringles can. Um, they're like $250 a piece and pretty much what they're meant for is to be dropped out of a plane at about around 8,000 feet where they, all they really are, it's almost like a paper airplane sort of, but what it does is it has just like a, a program board or computer board, motherboard on it and it allows the, it allows the drone to be able to monitor the weather while finding its location where it's supposed to be within like a, a yard like it's pretty ridiculous you drop it from 8,000 feet and it's land excuse me within 15 feet of the destination from 8,000 feet up which is super precise obviously for something that is so cheap um, drop I guess they drop a bunch of them and pretty much it's just for gathering information to be able to figure out more about weather when we're talking about tornadoes or we're talking about hurricanes this is again kind of sort of like a twister reference where you can drop this into a weather a weather thing, a weather occurrence, and that weather occurrence can get a lot of data that can help us to predict these kind of weather occurrences in the future, or if we're just having a nice day and trying to figure out why, you can learn that too. Um, so, or you could just ruin somebody's barbecue. Either way, um, US Navy is doing stuff with drones. All right, come on number three. MIT does a lot with drones lately, um, and they've made a lot of news, so we're just gonna keep that going, with MIT actually having to recently announce that they made a hybrid drone. Um, literally stating that they wanted to make the Prius of the skies, which just hurts my soul because living in LA, the people who drive Priuses are a very interesting breed. Um, but either way, they wanted to make the Prius of drones. So they made a hybrid drone that can actually carry 20 pounds up to 100 miles. Now for reference point of that, the Amazon drones that they're testing right now that are almost sort of fixed wing drones but still are quadcopters are getting about 30 minutes of flight time and these are getting about an hour and almost twice the distance. It's a pretty big deal um, because these drones can carry a lot of weight and they can carry it very, I mean they can carry it really far. Also, this technology is super scalable um, to the point of this could actually be used for flying vehicles for man, man vehicles or just bigger things that can be carried to the point where Uber, NASA and others are actually interested in the technology because it's so scalable and so useful. Um, and you guys know how much I like building technology, so this is one of those things that it's like another platform of how we can build carrying things with drones and being able to, you know, move stuff. So, yeah, keep your eye on it. Coming to number four, we have distressed swimmers in France. Okay, that's just not the whole story, but pretty much we have drones helping out some distressed swimmers in France. Now, if you remember, uh, yeah, this is relevant because where I am, Australia actually has shark finding drones. So they have drones that fly over the beaches that help them to find sharks because sharks are a real problem in Australia. And in France, the problem is actually the water itself. Um, some super, super, super choppy water um, in the southwestern side of France and a lot of people drown from that. So what they're doing is putting bright pink drones um, to be working with in conjunction with lifeguards to be able to drop lifeguard thingy like flotation devices as well as to monitor the waters and be able to help people safe. And since it's been implemented like months ago, they've already saved like 50 people. Um, the company that's actually implementing this is called Helper, 
um, which I don't even know what the acronym is. It's just, it's an acronym, HELPER in all caps is what I have. These drones are pretty quick and they can go up to 50 miles an hour and they look pretty sturdy from what you can see. And the thing that you notice when you're watching the video is that actually these drones look like they might be DJI drones. Uh, they have the, it looks like the X3 camera on it and as well as if you see the guy flying it, that looks to me like a DJI controller as well. So probably a quality drone, it's helping save lives and you know I'm all about that. Coming number five, we have drones joining the Secret Service. Uh, for the first time in U.S. history, we have drones actually helping to protect the president. Um, in his 17-day uh, vacation at Ben Minister Golf Course, they are using tethered drones to be able to monitor the area with infrared cameras, regular cameras, and other things that they're not telling us because that's what they're supposed to do. They're the Secret Service. But it's a big step as the U.S. government is really starting to deal with drones uh, and taking them head on, as I said earlier, with the U.S. Army thing, the U.S. Navy thing, and now the Secret Service. Um, they pretty much have these drones hovering at about 400 feet, which obviously is as high as they can go unless they get higher FAA clearance, and they're monitoring the whole area. And the people who live next to this golf course are actually really concerned about it because they're like, well, you're monitoring our yards as well because if you, you're up that high, you can see a lot of other things. So the Secret Service has promised to delete all the footage after 30 days, which doesn't mean anything to anybody because how would they know that happened? Either way, they're doing it. They're using drones to help protect the president. And uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting that that's the way that they'd use these kind of quadcopter drones. All right, and coming at number six, yes, we have a bonus one this week, is something I'm actually quite excited about, is that Florida actually just passed statewide drone laws. And I was excited about this because uh, I think it was like a month back, I, made, I did a drone news about Orlando's ordinance and Orlando's laws for drones. And that was a big deal because Orlando was becoming incredibly strict. Like the municipality laws of Orlando were so strict that most people just wouldn't be able to fly at all. And the state legislator at uh, Florida just like, nah, that's not how it's going to be, homies. They, they pretty much said all of the local municipality laws no longer matter. We're making blanket state laws, and this is what it is. And the idea behind that was actually to boost the economy. Um, what they were thinking is that if they can make laws that were favorable to drone delivery and drone services, that more drone delivery and drone services companies will make their bases in Florida, as Florida will be the beginning of how that works, or the first state to be like drone friendly. So the laws are super good for that. Uh, they're not completely out yet. Stay tuned, I'll be giving you guys more information on it, but I do know that the Orlando laws are gone, and these new state laws from uh, Florida are gonna be beneficial to us drone pilots. So I'm really looking, I really got excited about this story, and this is why it's the bonus story, is because this could be setting a precedent for how drone laws can be done across the country, whereas right now it's a really big gray area, as we all know, and it's pretty difficult to know if you can fly in certain places or not. So if we have states actually making blanket laws for the whole state, it can make it life a lot simpler for someone like myself who's a professional traveling drone pilot. So keep your eye on Florida because they could be setting the course for the rest of the country. What's up, Droners? Thank you for sticking with this Droner News. And if you want to see more, we got it. Or if you want to see the greatest opening to a drone-induced YouTube channel, bam, there it be. Always make sure that you subscribe to us because that is what allows us to do what we're doing. And make sure that you stay fly because that's what we need you to do.